One thing I've learned coming over to the US is actually that greens, for some reason, don't really factor into the diet that often, especially in the cooked form. You see a lot of leafy greens in salads in the US, but you don't see a lot of, uh, as many cooked greens as I like. And they're a huge part of most Chinese meals. If you go to a restaurant, if you're eating out at home, there's usually a plate of stir fried greens on the, on the, on the table. And I think there is a proper way to cook these greens. This is a general sort of like technique video. We're going to cook three types of greens, three types of ways to show you the different techniques that we can use, but most of them revolve around really coaxing out that natural sort of tender flavor from these leaves and making sure that those that texture isn't compromised. We're going to start with a basic one and then we're going to move on to one that has a little bit of a lobster sauce and finally we're going to do one sort of Hunan Sichuan style with a little bit more seasoning and a little bit of bacon. Here is the basic basic stir fry recipe. This is what this is the technique that I would use for any really leafy green that is on the tender side. So here's a really great example. This is spinach, not baby spinach, with the part of the stem still on. Here are yam leaves, which are really delicious and seasonal. These yam leaves um, have a little bit of that sort of a yucca um, smell to it. After you cook them, they get quite slippery, which is interesting. And then watercress, um, just bunched watercress. You can almost cook any other leafy green in this technique. I would say um, bok choy, I would do this way. Napa cabbage, I would probably do this way. Um, Chinese broccoli, as in gailan, I would also do this way. First and foremost is the processing of the vegetable. Let's start with the yam leaves. Well, the first thing to do is to rinse it of water so there's no more dirt. Um, oftentimes, especially in the US, you'll have small family farms, um, oftentimes Asian farms, grow these sort of special specialty um, vegetables, which means that they aren't sort of like processed the same way a bagged thing of salad is. So it's really important to wash them. And then take off the last inch or so. And then we're going to cut this into segments that fit inside of your pan, whatever pan you're using. I think this is about a 12 inch saute pan. So I'm just going to cut this into half. Cool. Keep this to the side. So here are the main components for cooking leafy greens. The first is the greens itself that needs to be processed and cleaned. The second is the seasoning, which is by and large salt, sugar, and MSG. MSG you can sub for chicken powder, mushroom powder, whatever you're comfortable with using. The garlic and the ginger and all those other aromatics, that's the third component. Now this is something that my dad had taught me um, and it's something that I stick to for leafy greens. You pick one aromatic, it's either garlic or ginger. Not oftentimes garlic and ginger, unless there's a bunch of other things going on as well. Because the whole dish is about celebrating the flavor of these greens, you don't really want to muddle it up with too much, um, too many different types of aromatics. And traditionally, if you asked my grandmother, for example, she would say that bok choy goes with garlic, but Chinese broccoli will, goes with ginger. It might be a question of habit. So for these yam leaves, we're gonna go garlic. The cook is, does not take very long. So uh, we want to smash them to help get some of that flavor out. I usually, for this amount, like to use about, I'm gonna say at least four, five or six cloves of garlic. And depending on how you want the eating experience to go, you could mince this up a little bit more fine so that every bite of leaf would have a little bit of garlic, or you can keep them whole if you don't want people to actually eat the garlic and you want a, a tamer garlic flavor, which is what I want. In Chinese restaurants, we have this thing called wok hei. Some people translate it to the breath of the wok or the air of the wok. That air of the wok is this reaction that happens when the food jumps up from the side of the pan, licks the flame, comes back in, and is cooked by conduction over and over again. There's as little sort of convection steaming as possible, which gives it basically almost a little bit of a mired reaction, caramelization on the outside of the vegetable. There are ways to achieve it at home that are complicated um, and I don't think are worth it. We can come close to it with a ripping, ripping hot pan. And actually the water that we are going to add is gonna help maintain that texture, knowing that we can't get our pan as hot as a restaurant can. Hot pan, oil's gonna go in, oil's gonna get hot, Garlic is gonna go in. We're not gonna wait for that garlic to brown because it's gonna be so close to burning. Once it starts to pick up a tiny bit of color, a couple seconds, the stems are gonna go in and we're gonna move it around to stop that garlic from burning. And then the leaves are gonna go in and then water on the side of the pan. 
Make sure everything's good. We're done. Now we're gonna wait for one to two minutes. We're cooking on an induction stove, so there is no flames licking on the side. And even for a home gas range, you don't often get that sort of um, delicious uh, charred effect. So we're not gonna try to get wok hay, right? We're just trying to aim for a well-seasoned, evenly cooked, well-textured leafy green. Once in a while, I'm gonna keep the lid on and move it just to make sure that that cook is even, but I'm not I'm going to uh, play with it too much because it's done. Okay, so looking in, you see that some of these greens are starting to turn a little bit yellow. That means it's time to take the lid off and you're at about 50 to 60%. So we're gonna season it, salt, sugar to tame any bitterness, but also to bring out that umami and MSG. Move this around and then toss it if you're able to. What you want to see before you take it out is you want to make sure that your garlic isn't burnt. There shouldn't be any residual liquid on the bottom and the thickest stem is starting to wilt. It's starting to soften up. Nice and still bright green. The leaves are dark. Everything's a little bit wilted. And then the sides, no running water on it. Yeah, leaves. Good. Lemon stem. Done. Beautiful. Standard issue, but perfect. The flavor you'll notice when you eat these, especially like spinach or watercress, the leaves themselves are gonna pick up a little bit more um, flavor because they soak in that water that's on the bottom with the salt and the sugar and the MSG. That's why it's important that when you cook it, you mix the leaves and the stems together so when people pick them up, they have sort of more balanced bites. Yam leaves are really interesting. They, have, they really do have that silky, slippery texture. They're quite good in soup and they're seasonal so you don't get to eat this all year round the way you can get probably spinach all year round. Quick note on the lobster sauce. The lobster sauce is a sauce that is called a lobster sauce because it used to be served with lobster that became quite popular in the US within Chinese American cooking. Lobster sauce doesn't have any lobster in it. It usually is just a thickened stock with an egg white drop. And so happens that the sauce does really well with heartier, slightly heavier greens. So today we're gonna to be cooking Tuscan kale with a lobster sauce. Some places, especially on the West Coast, might call it a white sauce, but in Chinese and Cantonese, we just call this a heen. A heen is a um, thickened stock. So first, the greens. Here's a beautiful Tuscan kale. I would recommend taking about most of the stem out of your greens, like so just because the inside is a little tough. If you use curly kale, the stem usually tends to be even thicker, which is to say even more unpleasant. Other greens I might recommend for this are um, collard greens would be good with this. Anything that can take on a little bit of liquid. It's not really a leafy green, but celery. It's pretty good with this. Um, broccoli would be wonderful. Also not a leafy green, but you, you know what I'm going for, right? Like hardier, um, hardier greens. Um, even gailan, which is Chinese broccoli, I think would be great here. Okay, I think these are tender enough. We'll use these for another purpose. And here, we're going to cut everything into manageable leaf sizes. Again, keep some of the woodier, stemmier parts away from the leaf so we can put this in first. The aromatics today, we're gonna to go for ginger. Just ginger, no garlic. That's rule. The seasoning, again, is going to be salt, sugar, and MSG, but um, we're also going to be doing an egg drop, so let's just prepare that egg drop real quick. So this is an egg white drop. The way egg drops work is when the egg hits liquid, um, the proteins, the egg proteins, denature really quickly to form 
little shreds, which means that if you speed up either the pore or you thin out the pore, or you speed up the denaturing of the protein, you can create smaller strands. Now, in Chinese cooking, we like to differentiate between making sort of more blankety pieces of egg in your egg drop versus little small um, swirls, depending on what you uh, what texture you're looking for. In this case, we're aiming for something in between. So the egg white is going to get a little bit of sesame oil. Sesame oil is aromatic. It's gonna help thin out that egg white a little bit. And we're returning some of that fat back into the egg white that we took out when we took out the egg yolks. A little bit of water is also going to thin the entire mixture out to let that pour go in a little bit more smoothly. Whisk all that together. You have to whisk it to break up that big glop of egg white, but you're not trying to make a meringue here. It's not bad. Preheating this pan, get it super ripping hot. Here's the game plan, once again. Oil's gonna go in, ginger is gonna get activated. After the ginger, the kale is gonna get mixed in, stem part first, let it cook a little bit, add the leaves, and then this water. And it goes on, let it cook for just a couple of minutes. The tight lid on the top is gonna create a hot atmosphere so that all that steam that's rising up is going to carry heat to start cooking the vegetables even on top, even if it's not in contact with the pan itself. So I'm seeing that the greens are starting to become dark green, which means that chlorophyll is coming out. And we're at about 50 or 60%. So now, to season it, salt, sugar, MSG, same thing. Now might be the time to ask the question, why are we adding our seasoning at the end? Because you don't want too much liquid to leak out of your vegetable. If you added it in the beginning of the cook, the salt and the sugar would start drawing out moisture, and that's not what you want for this. You want that vegetable itself to retain moisture, and then we're gonna pour another sauce on top of it. Okay, and we'll take it out when it's slightly beginning to wilt because it's gonna continue wilting with the residual heat. And now, because there's no liquid on the bottom of this, we're gonna to have to add a little bit more stock to build that lobster sauce. On some other vegetables like bok choy, you might notice a little bit more liquid on the bottom, in which case, feel free to just use that liquid. Here is the chicken stock that we're going to add. It's gonna pick up some of that fond, some of that stuff on the bottom, which is totally fine. Sometimes it's called a white sauce. It's only called a white sauce because there's no soy sauce or oyster sauce added. But this one, because of the bottom of the pan is a little bit brown from the fond of the vegetable, it's not going to be perfectly white. Okay, egg drop first, swirl with one side of the hand. You want this at a boil. And then pour with your left hand as thinly as possible a stream into the bottom of that pan. You see where those bubbles are? That's where the hot spot is. That's where you want it to land. There's that egg white. And here's a little bit of that potato starch. This is again, a potato starch slurry, one to one, just to thicken that liquid on the side of that egg white. The reason why we're thickening this is because you want everything to work in to the vegetable. You want it to cling to the vegetable. And the last step, this vegetable is gonna come back into the sauce so that we can make sure everything is tossed well together. There's a very classic Cantonese banquet dish that has a three types of eggs inside of one vegetable. It's also cooked with a type of basic stock, we call it sarong tong, chicken superior stock, and um, salted egg yolks, as well as century egg. It's not my favorite thing. The egg whites are always my favorite part. This is a version of that dish, obviously made with kale. You'll see that that thickened lobster sauce will actually just coat the kale and continue to soak up that flavor. Here's the kale with lobster sauce, a little bit of egg white to thicken that sauce, as well as the potato starch coated with lobster sauce thing. Wonderful. What we're looking for here is a nice, sort of like earthy, woody, um, more bitter green that is tempered by the sauce and the egg drop in that sauce. More fragile, more 
light leafy greens don't necessarily do so well with the sauce on top of it, but this is, um, kale does super, super well. Third stir fry. Now this one is about cooking vegetables that don't really want to be cooked properly and evenly. So cabbage. Cabbage is even hardier than the kale in terms of the amount of time it cooks it. You know, a lot of people braise cabbage, but this applies to any sort of stir-fried vegetable that has an irregular shape or anything about it that defies even cooking inside of a pan. So cauliflower is a great example. Uh, broccoli, same thing. In Chinese cooking, because that wok is cooking at such a high temperature, the cook is a very short amount of time. It's a couple of minutes, which is to say that in order to ensure even cooking, we usually like to blanch that vegetable before it's stir fried. In a traditional wok setup, in that same wok where you're blanching your vegetable, you're also going to just take that water out and then get to the stir frying. But in this case, at home, you might have to blanch it in the pot on the side. So here is a beautiful head of cabbage. This is technically a savoy. My preferred type of cabbage is a Korean cabbage, which tends to be flatter and wider and white. The leaves and the stalk isn't as thick. We're going to take out that stem. This dish is traditionally called a hand-torn cabbage. Um, it's a traditional Hunanese dish, um, but because of its sort of like proximity in terms of flavor profile and geography to um, Sichuan and sort of like those uh, Western areas, um, this is a very popular dish in Western, uh, in Sichuan restaurants as well. So all we're doing is we're just tearing it up into even sort of two inch pieces which is going to create a bit of a irregular texture, which is going to be fun to eat. And then we're just gonna loosen it up. Now, this cabbage here is quite thin because it's a Savoy. Napa would be the same, um, but regular sort of Western or rather American cabbage, the, it's usually quite thick and sometimes you might even have to take out the stem. But for those, you would blanch it for a little bit longer. After that, the cooking process is exactly the same. Big pot of water. Generous amount of salt, salty like the sea ocean. Cabbage is go in it. No more than probably 30 seconds, probably about like 15, or maybe even less. It's gonna get rid of some of that sort of, um, like it's a little gassy cabbage sometimes. We're gonna coax out that chlorophyll. If there is any dirt in it, this process will also help to clean it. It's gonna cook again, so you really don't want it to overcook. So once it comes out, into the ice bath. In Chinese restaurants, there are no ice baths. It's just cold running water. But the time in between letting the blanched vegetable sit and the cook is so short, it's a matter of minutes, maybe even seconds, ice water isn't as necessary in Chinese kitchens. For things like cauliflower, broccoli, probably let it go for 30 seconds. You're not trying to cook it, just um, the Chinese term for this is duan sheng, which is to cut the, it's a, to cut the life. It's a technical trans translation, but you're trying to s make it not raw, but not c cooked, if that makes sense. Okay, drain this off. This cabbage here is nice and bright green, not quite cooked, perfect for the stir fry. Second thing is the aromatics. So in this case, we're going to be using a ton of things, which is why my father's rule doesn't quite apply. There's going to be ginger and garlic scallions, bird eye chilies, Chinese bacon, Sichuan peppercorn, a little bit of fava bean paste, also known as pi xian douban, as well as soy sauce. So it's a lot going on. The garlic today, we're not going to be smashing it. We're actually going to be slicing it in case people do want to eat it. So horizontally, not the thinnest in the world, because you don't want it to burn. I'd call these thick slices, but I don't know what everyone else would call them. Here is Chinese bacon. This is bacon that's cured with wine and salt. This form of bacon they make in different places. It's similar to Chinese sausage, in a way. Chinese sausage is a great substitute for this. Regular bacon is also a decent substitute, or even pork belly, but I like this sort of flavor. I've taken the skin off of the Chinese bacon because this part is quite chewy. And then we're just going to slice this into thin slices. With this blanched cabbage, there is no need to add any water to the cook and therefore no need to put a lid on it. All you have to do is move it 
quite quickly. Here's the game plan. Oil's gonna be in. Once that oil starts to smoke, the aromatics are gonna go in. Ginger and scallion first because they don't burn as much. Once they start to pick up color, garlic's gonna go in with the chilies. After you start to smell everything come together, we're gonna hit it with a fava bean paste. A little bit of that color is gonna come out and we're gonna start cooking some of that color and that flavor out of the fava bean paste. After which the bacon and the Sichuan peppercorns will go in and the cabbage over the top. Toss, toss, toss. Finish the seasoning with sugar MSG and a little bit of light soy sauce because of tradition. Turn that off. Cabbage is cooked. Nice and flavorful. The green parts are still green. I think sometimes when people in the US think about stir fries, they think of stir fries the way uh, Western dishes are conceived, as in meat plus vegetable plus sauce. The key for a lot of Chinese cooking is that we don't really have generally especially in cooked stir-fry dishes, this idea of sauce. You don't build a sauce on the side and definitely like pour it over. Most of the time, it's the natural liquids that come out of everything that comes together, whether it's the blanched vegetable or like it's leaking uh, more water as it's cooking. All of that liquid becomes a carrier for flavor. So we don't always have to build a sauce on the side. The soy sauce here is almost just for color and just to give it that soy taste. It's not a, a sauce the way that a beurre blanc is a sauce or a honey mustard sauce is a sauce. Here's the spicy cabbage, Hunanese hand-torn cabbage. Savoy, bacon, chilies, garlic, ginger, scallion, a little bit of pisa and oban of that fava bean paste. I mean, for the three, this is definitely the most flavorful because we've added so many aromatics to it. It's cooked beautifully, the texture is wonderful, the color, as you can see, is a brilliant green and golden and yellow with a little bit of that oil over the top. For a lot of people, I think this is gonna be their favorite of the three, but it is the most complicated and it is a really good employment of this blanching technique to get a nice even cook, nice and evenly flavorful. This is one video, but three recipes and three associated techniques on the theme of green vegetables. All of the recipes are available in Food 52. Eat your vegetables, eat your vegetables, yeah. They're good looking, I mean, they're really, really good dishes, but yeah.